check it out guys. I've shown this plenty of times before, but there's a lot of people who haven't seen this amazing part of Israel. You don't see it too often like this. The double entrance stairs down, stairs back up. You go down into this ritual bath, which contains pure Judean rainwater in the times of the winter. You go down the path impure on a spiritual level. You dip into the holy waters and you come out pure. Why is it here and why is there a separation in between? Great question, I'm glad you asked. It is to allow for those that are impure and those that are pure to not touch. But why is it here to begin with? That's an even greater question and I'm glad you asked that as well. But before I answer that, I want to show you something amazing. My pleasure, Joyce. Thank you for joining me. If you ever feel like you're losing hope, that the world is turning dark around you, I promise you we are on the right path, as we say down south. We have grapes on the vines in the hills of Judah. We have houses sprouting up with Jewish families out of the hills. We're in good shape, everybody. Now, before I even answer that question about why that ancient ritual bath is here, I want to let you know about, well, this is really cool. This is an ancient Roman cistern. But please, please, please click on the link. July 4th, we're having a barbecue for the heroes of the Gaza border. These are guys, almost 40 at this point, who are nonstop for 20 years taking rockets, mortars, sniper fire, tunnels, PTSD, like we can't even imagine them, their families. We're sponsoring a gourmet barbecue for them. We have some amazing people coming to serve them. We're not there to show off. We're not there to look at guns and cool things. We're there to serve the heroes of Israel. Just like I pray to God that every American that I know is serving those that fight for the flag on the 4th of July. So join me as I and my friends fly Old Glory and some other cool American flags that I receive from warriors in America. I'm going to fly them over the Gaza border together with the Israeli flag. Now, now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up the trash because it's the land of Israel and we have to show God that we want to be here. We deserve it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get you as close as I can to this beautiful ritual bath without losing you. And many of you know, and I'm sorry if I echo, echo right now, you could see that ritual bath is alive. Now, I can't get too close or I will lose connection. And if I do, just bear with me. And if you've seen this before, then look at it again, because we don't require massive castles of gold to show our love of God. We will have the Beit HaMikdash, the temple again. We don't require loudspeakers shouting Allahu Akbar five times a day. What we require are holes in the hills of Judah that could only have been dug out by the nation of Israel stretching as far back as the time of David and Solomon. And why were they doing that right here? Because we are on the path of the patriarchs. We are on the path from Hebron, from Beersheba, all the way to Jerusalem. And that takes us to the temple. And before you even see holy Jerusalem, which the world tries to disconnect our history from and replace it with a history that is not theirs, we were digging holes in the earth, showing our love of God's commandments and our love for the land of Israel. And of course, our capital, Jerusalem. So now that you have a good understanding as to where we are and why, Why don't we read a psalm written by the king of Israel who wrote these very psalms in these hills? And we're doing it on top of a 3,500-year-old Jewish ritual bath, a mikvah, on the path of the patriarchs that connect us all right now through the legs that I'm standing on and this cool camera device that I'm holding in my hand. No matter where you are in the world, it connects all of us from Beersheba, the Negev Desert, Beersheba, Hebron, Hebron, all the way up Route 60. Straight past through the the hills of Judah where Mother Rachel still lies to this day for her children to return home from the four corners of the earth, willingly or unwillingly. It's happening as I speak. And if you're a Jew and you're watching this, you are going to come home. Even if you feel no connection to Israel. It's just prophecy. Read about it. It's 
a good book. Anyway, Psalm 20. While I'm doing that, I want you to stare at the beautiful fields of Judah. Fields that unfortunately, unfortunately are being hijacked by the PLO and by Hamas every single day, including these fields right here that lead right up to a Jewish mikvah. There's no way the PLO can tell me that ancient Mohammedans were digging ritual baths in Judea 3,500 years ago. If they can claim that, that would be impressive. But you stare at the land that's being stolen around me while I read the Psalms of the man who conquered this land so we could have it for our generations to come until the Messiah comes, please God. Very speedily in our day. Psalm 20. And I'm going to say it out loud so even the neighbors that are stealing these fields hear us. For the chief musician, a psalm of David. May the Lord answer you in a time of distress. May the name of Jacob's God be a tower of strength to you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion, from Zion. That's what I'm trying to accomplish right now, is to give you in my own little way, which is nothing, but to give you some support from the mountains of Zion. How? Not by making false promises, like I see all over Facebook, these snake oil salesmen, these ministries they have, telling you to give to causes and they'll multiply your blessing by thousands when the only people multiplied are the leaders of the ministries. I'm doing it by showing you the grapes of Israel, the prophecy in action. I'm doing it so you and I love the dirt the dust and the rocks of Israel more than our greatest joy. And every single person I know around me does that. They give their own children over to the Israel Defense Forces. If that doesn't put Israel above your greatest joy, then I don't know if you truly understand the concept of love and connection and dedication. Yishlach Ezra Chomi Kodesh Mitzon Yisadeko Yizkor Kol Min Chotecho Ba'olotcho Yedashno Selo Yiten Lech Yiten Lech Achil Bovecho V'chol Atzotcho Yimalei Neraneno Bishuatcho Bishuatecho V'shem Eloheinu Nigdol Yimalei Adonai Kol Mishlotecho Ato Yedate Ki Yoshia Adonai Meshicho does that word sound familiar? Meshicho, Meshiach, Yanehu, Mishmei Kedsho, Kedsho, Bigvorot, Yesha, Yemino. I'm going to get to the English in just a second. Bear with me. And this, I've done this psalm a lot because I love this psalm. And as the Arabs pray over the loudspeaker, we're going to continue to read psalms. Elev Rechev, the Elev Susim, Vanachnu Beshem, Hashem Elokeinu Nisnazkir. Hey makaru vinafalu vanachnu kamnu vinitodad. Adanoi hashia hamelech ya neinu uviyom kareinu. Written in the very hills where David wrote the Psalms. May we shout for joy over your victory. And in the name of our God, unfurl our banners. May the Lord grant your every request. Now I know that the Lord will give victory to his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. And as we know within Judaism, the right hand, the right side represents more like truth and goodness and justice. It's a very interesting Kabbalistic style concept. But he will... Answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some boast of chariots. Some of horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and they fall. But we rise up 
and we stand firm. Lord, grant victory. May the King answer us when we call. Now, let me just show you one more really cool thing here, and then I'm going to let you go. I want to tell you, if you haven't seen this before, we know that the Torah teaches the nation of Israel the first commandment we have as a nation, it's really pretty here, is what? It's to keep time, the month, right? The new moon. How would they declare the new month, the new moon, from Jerusalem back in the old days throughout the country, throughout the land? Well, most of us know, some of us don't. But we will, after we learn this Torah today, that there would be men standing on every hilltop throughout the spinal column of hilltops in the heartland of the land of Israel. Judea, Samaria, with Jerusalem being at the core. Like a wheel, the hub of the wheel, and then the spokes leading out. And right now, you and I, actually, we're not at the top. Let's go to the top here together. Right now, in this beautiful area, all of us as one are at the very top of the land of Israel, truly. And we're going to light the torch. It isn't Rosh Chodesh. It isn't the head of the month today. It isn't the new month today. It isn't the new moon today. But we're going to light the torch of Torah by joining together to plant the land and redeem Israel, by joining together to continue to spread Torah from the hills of Zion, which is Israel, to continue to be a guiding light to the nations from Israel. And we will do it all, not necessarily under the banner of the state of Israel. We will do it all under the banner of the Torah of Israel, of the God of Israel. Because it's only that that has lasted us throughout the generations. Argue with me. Tell me I'm a nut. That's cool. But show me why. And then explain to me the revival of the Jewish nation after near decimation. Every generation and generation. And then here we are together. Watching the grapes grow in the very hills that the prophet told us we would be doing so. In those days when... Ten nations would be grabbing on to the shirt tails of a Jew, begging them to take them to Jerusalem. That is what you are witnessing. Yeah, there's thorns below. But look what's here. Look what's all around you. Sometimes all we got to do is look up. God bless you all from beautiful, magical, gorgeous, just magnificent Israel. God should continue to bless each of us with our eyes to be open, to continue to learn Torah together as one, to continue to not judge our fellow human, to continue to show compassion to those, even those within our nation who are evil. It is forbidden for us to speak negatively against them. That is a directive from the Torah because God commands us that he requires that even the evil ones he hopes will repent and come back. And if God is is able to do that, then we must reflect godliness. So join me as we do it together, working on ourselves every single day. None of this is free. You got to work your butt off for it. My throat's dry. Thanks for listening to me rant and rave. I just want you all just to take one second with me and fulfill a biblical commandment. This is not cheesy. I don't care where you are. If you're in the mall, my Muslim friends would stop in the mall and they will pray. They will roll out their carpet and pray to Allah. If you can't stop wherever you are for one second and just say, God bless Israel. God bless the land of Israel. God bless the nation of Israel. And God bless our unity with Israel. Simple. It's simple. You, satis- you actually satisfy biblical commandments by saying those words, by cherishing this land. It doesn't matter if it sounds radical. It doesn't matter if it sounds emotional. It doesn't matter if it sounds nuts to people. We are taught by our great sages that in the times of Mashiach, up will be down, down will be up, right will be wrong, wrong will be right, left will be right, right will be left. Nothing will make sense and you will be tested and you will feel alone. 
We had Corona, that was a global test. Now we're coming up to Shemitah, where this whole land has to lay fallow. That is a test, a spotlight directly on the land of Israel. Please join us for Shemitah. We have 250 olive trees to plant right here in these hills. Please make sure we get 251 of them. Just go on unitywarriors.com. I'm not just asking you for money. We're planting the trees live. You're watching it. We're conquering this land for you. I'm not angry. I'm through the moon with excitement. There is no organization that will ever talk like this because they're afraid to lose their donor base by teaching Torah from the hills. Where does our money come from? Where does our protection come from? Where does our success come from? Why does God tell us to love the Torah, to love the land with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our resources? It's exactly for this test. So plant the land. Show love to the heroes of Israel by feeding them steaks as we serve them. The king should be serving them. Any organization that puts the heroes of Israel up on a stage to dance and prance in front of you like show ponies, they should be disbanded. They should be shamed out of, out of their 501c3. We should be serving the heroes. And that's me talking. I'm carrying a battle rifle to protect this land. Join me on this path. I got people working side by side. I got people working in front of me to drag me along on this path. Please just join us. It's so pure and beautiful. And when you're here, I got, I got people coming to Israel to visit their, their daughter who's in the army. She's coming to go serve the, sol the, the security officers with us on the Gaza border on Sunday with her daughter. Who's a soldier who carries a rifle. She's coming. She's taking the time to drive her car all the way down to the Gaza border. Don't you get it? Seek peace. Seek truth. Seek justice. But you must join in on the fight. Don't be a bystander as you watch history literally roll by right by. These stones are jealous of you. All they want are your footsteps on them. I promise you that. Why do you think the enemy wants this so much? Why? Do we have, did anybody know we had oil here up until a few years ago? No. Was there any natural resources here up until our people came back after being disconnected forcibly, raped and mauled and mutilated and burnt and forced out of this land? They renamed this land to make it Judenrein like they've done in every generation. They're jealous of you. Get on an airplane and come join us. If you don't have a first degree relative to visit in this land and you are a Jew, please be that first degree relative for your relatives. Please. I love you. I cherish you. And I pray to God that you continue to simply walk that path. It's not hard. You don't have to wear a yarmulke. You don't have to be an ultra Orthodox Jew. You just have to wipe the dirt off of the soul that you were blessed with. God bless you all from Israel. Much love.